bike shredders, let's have a look at how to ride steep trails. Okay, let's start off by having a quick chat about bike setup and body position. So our natural reaction to riding down something steep is to bring the weight back because we need to counter the effects of gravity. So we can make that easier by putting our saddles down out of the way. But when you start to go down, you need to be careful not to go too far back. If you look as I ride down here, my arms are dead straight. My bum is as back as as far as I could get it. And look how wibbly wobbly the front wheel is. I've really got very little control over the front wheel. And that's because my weight's actually a bit too far back. So if we bring the weight forward a little bit, so now my bum's kind of between the saddle and the rear axle, I've got some flex at the elbows. I've got way more control on the front wheel. You can see that it's not wibbling around as much. There's a few other things in bike setup which can also kind of sort of always force you into being too far back. Believe it or not, having bars which are a bit too low can have that effect. Because they're low, that brings you forward. And because you want to get your weight back on a steep bit, you're fighting that, that more forward stance, which means you have to go further back on the bike. So that's one thing. Another thing is the, the length of your stem. I'm running a 50 mil stem, and I'd say probably anything over that would be deemed long. And that's going to bring you forward as well. So that again is going to mean you're going to have to fight being pulled forward and it results in you having to hang off the back a little bit more. So both of those two things can have an effect on the amount of control you've got over the front wheel and your steering. And saddle height, even with a dropper post, 10 millimetres can make all the difference between whether or not you're forced behind the saddle or you're able to hover above it. So what I've found myself in recent years, I used to run a 150 mil drop, I'm now on a 170 and it just gives me that much more space to move around on the bike and feel safer and more confident, especially on these steep trails. So if you're running quite a short dropper, why not just put this static bit down a little bit more and see how that feels and consider getting a longer one. Last couple of things with bike setup. These are more general things, but you want a good tire with a good knobble like this, because with these nice square edges, that's gonna dig into the ground and you're gonna actually get braking traction. If they're smooth, worn out, or just not very knobbly, they're just gonna slide across the, the terrain and you're not gonna get any braking traction. You're just gonna pick up speed. And then with the forks, let's talk about suspension, the forks and the shock, but particularly the forks, if they are too soft, they're gonna dive into their travel on the steep stuff and that's going to make you feel like you're being pulled further forward over the, over the bike. So do check that your sag is set up, check your, check your suspension settings. I actually made a video about suspension settings not that long ago, and you can check that out up here, or you can find the link in the description below. All right, so now we've had a little chat about bike setup and body position, let's get down to the actual bike riding. So I'm sure you'll agree, probably one of the scariest things about steep stuff is just how quickly you pick up speed. It just looks daunting. So one of the ways that we can solve the extreme speed gain is to enter really slowly. Obviously, the better your balance, the slower you're going to be able to enter. But the main point is don't go barreling into your steep section. Slow down real, you know, as much as you can, as much as you're comfortable with, and then just go in really gently and you're not going to pick up as much speed. The other bonus of entering slowly is that you've got the control to just stop halfway down. Depending on the terrain, here I was able to turn out and stop. And the other thing that made that possible was the way I was using my brakes. So let's have a little chat about using the brakes effectively. So the brakes, you want to be quite careful with these in steep stuff. It can be really easy to over brake and end up skidding. And what that means is that your, your tires, particularly the back one, is just surfing across the surface of the ground and it's not digging in, it's not giving you any of that braking traction that you are so in need of. So what I'd say is be, try and be quite gentle with the operation of the levers, like squeeze them rather than grabbing them. Because most of your weight is going to be going through the front of the bike, a lot of that braking force is going to come from the front wheel. But if you tried to ride down just using the front brake, you'd find it really quite difficult. So hence saying, use them both together as much as you can. Um, if you find that you have locked up the rear wheel, just try and like just ease that lever off just a teeny tiny bit just to get that wheel spinning again. And you might have to do that several times as you ride down a piece of trail. Thank you. 
If you'd like me to personally help you with how to ride steeps or any other skill, and you're going to be in Morzine this summer, don't hesitate to look me up. You can check out my website, it's in the description below. Put yourself into a skill session. The other thing that's really important with riding steep tracks, particularly if they're sort of a homegrown track like what you might find on um, Plenty in Morzine, you want to be looking for places where you can slow down. So on this track here, there's you probably, it probably doesn't look like it, but there's an ever so slightly flat bit here and it's going across the fall line as well. So this is a great place to slow down. And then here it's going straight down the fall line, so you're going to pick up speed. But then here we've got another flatter bit that's going across. And then that again is another great place to, to slow down. And then we get this next steep bit and here you can do the thing I said, enter this really slowly and make your way down to the next spot where you can see there's a, the slightest little catch berm down there and use that to slow down. So you're really looking for opportunities to lose speed, then you're going to gain a bit, lose a bit, and, and you've, so you've got to get those eyes up and just really trust your ability. And in this scenario, you're probably going to start to use a little bit of rear steer, so using the hips and feet to move the back of the bike around. And I'm going to contradict myself with what I said before about trying not to lock the back brake up. Once you get really confident with your levels of control with your braking and just riding, uh, let's say, shorter sections, shorter steep sections, you can actually use the back brake to your advantage. So when I come down here, I'm going to like sort of slide into these flat bits. So that's going to help slow me down. But I am using my back brake to do that. I'm basically skidding. So once you start to build some confidence, you can, you can experiment with that. Hopefully you can take these tips to the trail and really build your confidence on steep tracks. Start to put them into, into practice, but practice is the key word. I could not ride this kind of trail um, about 15 years ago. I spent an entire six weeks figuring it out and then I could do it without having to stick my feet out all over the place. If you liked the video, don't forget, hit like, hit subscribe, all those things, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. But as you, oh, what's the word? As you implement, as you implement these tips, that's a bit of a fancy word, isn't it? <laughs> you put these tips into practice. Oh, I've said practice too much. Okay. <laughs> as you use what I've said to you.